Yeah. Yeah, that looks about right. Like I said in my review, if you're relying on antics and releasing mediocre music, your downfall is just inevitable. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Music on the Channel. I hope you all are having a wonderful day so far, and today we are going to be talking about the latest album from New York MC, Conway the Machine, called From King to a God. Where to begin with Conway? Maybe the fact that this is his third release in 2020, or perhaps that this is his 10th project officially released, despite this being his debut. Yeah, definitely earning the title of Machine, no doubt. It's absolutely undeniable that the Griselda crew has been grinding non-stop since the mid-2000s, including Conway along with Westside Gun and Benny the Butcher. It would seem as though these guys are hellbent on making it to the top of their craft, already getting in contact with high-profile rappers from the likes of Jay-Z to Eminem. When it comes to a project from Conway, or really any of the Griselda members, you can expect lots of gun talk, lots of drug talk, running the streets, and making it to the top off of sheer dedication. Oh, yeah, and there's no holding back on calling bullshit. If you took a shot any time they confessed to straight realism, you'd be in the ER by the end of any project they released. But let's not generalize here. This is Conway's moment to shine after all, so let me focus up. It would seem the multiple gunshot wounds to his head and neck leaving his face partly paralyzed wouldn't stop him, and if anything, fueled his desire to make it out of the hood and prove something to his hometown. And even though this is his technical debut, it feels like the Conway project we've all been waiting for. This is kind of a worrisome sentiment though, considering how short of a time he's taken in between projects, would he be stretching himself too thin and result in an album that seems like more could be accomplished, or would he excel even beyond that and concoct one of, if not his best project to date? Well, ladies and gentlemen, while From King to a God isn't quite an outstanding project, it certainly comes out as Conway's most focused and comfortable album to date. And yes, comfortable isn't always what you want from an artist, but when they've been discussing relatively the same subject matter their whole career and still make it sound fresh, that's something you just gotta commend. And yet, Conway still makes an effort to branch out of his usual shtick and talk about other topics that he's affected by. One of the best songs in the project is a true testament to this, that being Frontlines. The track finds Conway discussing police brutality in the many ways that it's not just affected him, but his own community. Following this with the warning hook to any crooked cop that thinks they can get away with it as well. On the flip side of the coin, he transitions later on the project into talking about the passing of Griselda associate DJ Shea, going as far as to admit to drinking before his funeral to be able to make it through. Not to mention seeing everything but Jesus with Freddie Gibbs in which they both tell of street horrors they can't unsee, Gibbs having an absolutely chilling line about wearing Nikes that had his cousin's blood on it because he couldn't afford others. Damn! It's this brutal honesty where Conway draws his power from, his ability to hold back no punches and give the facts straight up. I, that is when he feels like it. Even the moments that are less personal here are still engaging by the lingo and braggadocio only Conway can spit. For the most part, that's all his verse on the Posse Cut Spurs 3 is about, yet he still comes out ahead of his label mates with colorful language and creative bars that can't be matched, though I I'd argue Benny comes pretty close. The same goes for Juvenile Hell. While Lloyd Banks walks away with the hottest verse, it doesn't mean the track doesn't end up being hard as hell with killer verses all across the board. The album doesn't come without its flaws though, as the first leg of the project is probably the weakest. Starting off well enough with the guitar led from King, the track is a good set up for what the listener can expect to hear for the majority of runtime, adding British writer Alan Watts as a soundbite for added effect. But the album soon trails off a bit upon hearing Dej Lo's performance on Fear of God, coming off a little grating and ruining the otherwise decent momentum of the track, despite Conway sounding a little disinterested. Likewise, Conway and Method Man are a match made in heaven, but Conway unfortunately underperforms in a track that he could have easily crushed with Lemon Squeeze. And as much as I enjoy the humorous bars on Doe and Damani, the track comes off a lot more like aimless rambling than a connecting track. Later on, we also get a dollar bin version of Megan the Stallion with Armani Caesar on Anza. Not necessarily bad, but you know he's just trying to save some cash and put someone else on in the process. I still gotta commend that track for being a little out of pocket for Conway, sounding a lot more club ready than anything he's ever done. That can be credited to the beat, all of which on this project only do Conway favors. There are no moments when a beat felt too out of place or awkward. The only thing that comes to mind is Spurs 3 that's ambitious with its wind chime-esque instrumental, courtesy of Beat Butcha, but can be piercing to the ears and unintentionally overpower some of the lines in the song. Other than that though, I would still say that each feature has its place on here, and no beat felt too out of pocket for him to tackle. A lot of the other beats from Beat Butcha on this project come off a lot better, and with assisted production from The Alchemist, there is no way this could have sounded bad. Especially with all producers involved having worked with Conway already. Through it all, the project ends up being one of his best to date. Sure, there are moments when you're feeling as though topics have been covered plenty of times on previous projects, but Conway changes ever so slightly over each output that he's now sounding as though he can't be touched. The confident cadence and ear for grimy beats does more than enough to sell you on this album, and his willfulness to expand his subject matter makes the experience even better. 
Time has only proved to tick in Conway's favor, as each project sounds like he's becoming more of a sharp lyricist. I even picked up on a few instances where he's trying to branch out his flow as well, not sticking to the same humdrum pattern that he's used to. I can honestly say no track was an immediate skip and one that I wouldn't want to come back to here again. I'm honestly looking forward to see what his next release holds. Despite being on a label with two other sharp shooters, Conway manages to not only step out of the shadows, but shine just as bright. A really good project, and another shining moment for Mr. Machine. As far as where this album ranks amongst his discography, I have to be honest with you guys and say that I haven't heard all of Conway's albums and it would be unfair for me to rank it out of projects that I haven't heard before and would just be kind of unfair to you guys. And I'm going to follow that up by saying I do enjoy when Conway's being short and concise with his projects, especially when he's working with a single producer. That's when I found to enjoy every aspect of what the album has to offer. And with all that being said, it should be no surprise that my favorite project by Conway the Machine as of now is still Lulu, his collaboration project with The Alchemist, followed by Look What I Became, and then we have From King to a God, and then I will go with No One Mourns the Wicked, Everybody is Food 3, and Everybody is Food 2. My top five favorite songs from the project come out to be Juvenile Hell, Frontlines, Seen Everything But Jesus, Forever Dropping Tears, and Nothing Less. And I think that does it. Thank you guys so much for watching all the way until the end. If you watched all the way until the end, I truly appreciate it. If you want to follow me on Instagram or Twitter, we could talk about it there because of course, this is just my opinion. I'd like to hear your guys' as well. Or just leave a comment in the comment section. Either way works. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.